this is a time of year that I just cannot put into words properly. The opener of PA rifle season is today, or perhaps I should say was today. By the time this video comes out, it's pretty well going to be over, and hopefully by this point I'll be sitting behind a buck, or maybe if we get lucky enough we'll have two bucks. But I wanted to come out here into the Hunter Classic. We tend to do this most years and kind of go for a similar hunt. So the caliber that I use in real life is a 7mm 08, and that's what I've got here. We just did a hunt with this over on Ruguru Bayou, and in the past, I've usually hunted Whiteheart Island because the southern part of Whiteheart Island is the most similar in terms of species to what we have here in PA, but because we just hunted deer two days ago for the turkey hunt, I decided to come to Red Feather. It tends to be the best whitetail map for me, and we'll kind of see what we can find out here today. Now, there are, of course, a bunch of things I can't emulate perfectly as far as PA rifle season goes, and one of which is the hunting style. I'm not exactly going to be walking around looking for tracks, but a max weight whitetail track here in-game is definitely something to go and take a look at, and because we are primarily going to be rifle hunting today, I wanted to kind of save my fast travel just in case maybe we shoot a buck and want to move on, but this guy's walking kind of a weird direction. Depending on where we encounter him, it might be the kind of thing where we can just turn around and kind of get right back on track. That cannot be the buck that we're tracking. He's 70 to 80 kg, so that's definitely not it. Now, I brought the snake bite. It's the, I think, quietest compound bow in the game at this point. It used to be basically the loudest. But uh, just to kind of take that guy out, if for no other reason, to get rid of some potential footsteps or potential, I guess, a deer that could spook towards the one that we're tracking, I wanted to take him out. And I know, like, I would prefer to mostly just rifle hunt, but in certain scenarios, I figured having the bow would be useful, and I think this is one of them. Now, I have to think that the buck we're after should be on this little island. All the water around us should be too deep for him to travel through. So, unless he just, I don't know, is on the back side of it, I don't quite get how he's out of sight. How on earth? I just spent so much time walking around on that island convinced that he uh. must have basically taken this little crossing that I hadn't seen. I was just up there and he grunted from over there. We're not even gonna try to cross back. We're just gonna stay on this side and get ready. Well, I guess the positive is he grunted and made our lives easier because he's not that big a bug. And actually, minus the fact that it just threw our sights way up in the air, we're in a decent spot to use the bipod, so at the very least, that wasn't that bad of a track. And I mean, 90 to 100 kg, that's one of those just really heavy whitetail that doesn't have that special of a score. And admittedly, I think I say this every year when we do these kind of first day of rifle season hunts in classic. If I saw that in real life, I would be so thrilled to get an opportunity at a deer of that size. But in classic, it's kind of just an average size one that we're not all that interested in. But we have in fact shot two bucks now on this little island thanks to having the snake bite with us. And at least this isn't one that we'll track later for any longer than we did at this point. So couple of stickers as well. Hard shot him there in the 91.6 kg. It's a pretty heavy buck to score 111. Our other one is laying right down here and something I wanted to get to do early in this video was wish anyone out there who's still hunting good luck and I know a lot of times like I see it in streams and stuff some of you guys watch the videos and streams while on the stand so hopefully the last little bit of light maybe something will happen. Now speaking of something happening where the heck was that buck that we shot? I think I was only off by a good 100 meters or so. Kind of, I don't know, we weren't even that far from when we shot the other buck. I just didn't realize it was laying right there, but got our two, and unfortunately combined, they're not going to reach the 200 mark, but at least we got them down. Like I said, that's going to be a couple of calls and tracks to not have to worry about running into later, and we're in this weird spot. Like, I wanted to go basically this way, so... Taking a gunshot over here really doesn't impact anything. We should be good to basically be hunting undisturbed area up ahead. Well, we haven't gone that far, and we have another buck out here, and one that may require us to be a little bit creative. It depends on how bad the angle here, here is with the bipod. I mean, we can make that work. 
it is a really solid A point, and I mean, again, when it comes to real life terms, that would be a nice buck, but because we've only gone, I don't know, what what is that, 220 meters? I'm not even sure how this buck didn't spook, but again, I'm pretty happy to take that and continue on our path here, and just kind of hang on to that fast travel for eventually when either buck stops showing up, or maybe if we get a little further in and take a shot, and I don't want to continue going through an area that is now, you know, having deer run everywhere and potentially spooking stuff, so nice to get what is our third buck already, and I mean, none that are all that special, but the more of these smaller ones we can get out of the way that will keep us from picking up their tracks and spending time on them later, in my opinion, the better. So 108, guess that would be our second biggest buck so far, hopefully that won't stay the case for long, and we'll continue on our way west here. You know, we don't do much rifle hunting in this game anymore, and I think that's been pretty well documented. We tend to just hunt with a bow, and we spend a lot of time just kind of sitting still waiting for a deer to come into a call, and half of my kind of thought process on that is that there's a chance we could be calling in a small buck that we're looking at while a big buck's coming in from another side, and by using the bow, not only are we taking that time to potentially call it closer, but we wouldn't be spooking it by shooting the bow rather than shooting a gun, but one thing that I'm already enjoying is the fact that we don't have to get that close. I mean, we can just go ahead and take a shot at a range like that. And using the 7mm08, it's not a big deal whatsoever. And of course, that was a very less than impressive buck, so we can just take that and move right along. Now, I'm wondering where to go here. I'm, we're in a position where I'd really like to fast travel up to here. It's one of my favorite areas that definitely has produced some big bucks in the past. At the same time, I also want to go down to here and kind of some recent bias there. That is where we shot our 190 7x7 in a recent hunt. So maybe we'll go north for now because it's closer. And we can work our way over towards the east side after that. 55.9, so a couple of smaller bucks. But again, hopefully that's just setting up for the bigger bucks to be towards the end of the hunt. Okay, well, that's definitely the sound we want to hear. We may have some kind of more pressing matters, though. I definitely heard footsteps the moment that we fast traveled. And, like, deer footsteps. Not a moose, not a bear. There's a deer somewhere. It's got to be right behind this brush. And it could well be a buck. That's the thing that we just simply can't know. Especially with a fast travel. It's just, it could be anything. And I don't know exactly how the spook mechanic works or if it is staring at us right now. Now, one thing that I think plays in our favor, yeah, I was going to say that track looked like it was pretty small, so I figured it may have been a doe. Not the best angle, but I think the snake bite has enough power here. Rough angle, I thought maybe that could drop it, but as long as it goes that way, we'll be fine. Now, that's a better looking buck, and he grunted right as we got the binoculars up on him. I wanted to mention earlier, by the way, and things kind of got a little bit uh, crazy with the multiple bucks at the beginning, but I decided to go with the normal non-range finding binoculars just to kind of go with a little more like what I'd be using in real life. Now that is a very wide, but kind of low 8x8. I think he'll score good, probably even in the 170s, but if he had longer tines, we'd be looking really, really good. Another thing he has going for him, I mean, he's pretty even. Everything pretty well matches up, but we saw from the estimate he can't be huge. 168.8, I mean, definitely for that rack. That doesn't surprise me that he's in that range, but we'll get a trophy shot with our rifle here. Definitely not one that we get to put in many trophy shots. As I said, we primarily tend to bow hunt. You know, I wanted to kind of show off the gun a little bit in this, but I really like this deer hunter pose. It's not often that things line up so perfectly to kind of hold it by one time but then the scope just kind of goes through our jacket there, so I don't know, what do you do? It's not the biggest buck out there, and hopefully not the biggest buck out here on our map today, but I'd like to think we made the right decision in fast traveling here. Obviously, we can't know what was at the other spot, but generally we're going to be kind of moving pretty much this direction to ultimately end up down in there. There is no shortage of bucks this size out today. A lot of times we'll go an entire hunt, like an entire video, without seeing one of these. And this will be the third one, although he's a little bigger than the last two. 
And actually, 80 to 90 kg, I think I had his track a little while ago. And it was one that I kind of elected not to follow. Sort of because of what we've seen already in this hunt with the... I guess it was technically the second buck, the first one we tracked, being max weight and not that big. And perhaps if we tracked him, we'd have ended up at the same spot. But I wouldn't be shocked at all if he would have led us in a huge loop. And yeah, we can see that's a... I've had one track from him already and he did not grunt. It could have taken us forever, ultimately for a result of, yeah, a 56. So, glad that worked out as it did. And again, I, I cannot overstate as we pick up another max weight white tail track, because we're going this way now, but I just, the difference it makes when, you know, I spot a small buck and just can shoot it with a gun rather than knowing it's small but waiting to call it in to take it with a bow, it really does speed things along. And I don't know if this is a hunting style that we'll look at more in the future, but I definitely do like it more than I kind of remembered from past rifle hunts. Well, actually, that didn't turn out to be too bad a decision. A 160 to 185 score estimate buck, and again, an 8x8. I go back to this a lot, but our last 190 was a 7x7, and had he been an 8x8 with any bit of symmetry to what would be, I guess, his G6s or 7s, he would have been a 200. I mean, he was just about perfect, just lacking a couple of tides. And then today, and this happens a lot, we've got a couple of 8x8s, but their frame and time length and all that aren't anywhere near what we need for a 200, and if we could just get the stars to align and kind of get both of those in the same rack, we'd have exactly what we're after with this kind of 200 grind, which has been going on for forever, and who knows exactly when it's going to end. I do feel like we're maybe kind of getting somewhere with spending a bunch of time in multiplayer and all that, but who knows exactly what this game has in store for us going forward. That was a stomach shot on a 170 scoring buck, so kind of improving. And again, that wasn't a bad track. I mean, probably only took 10 or 15 minutes. Things are going pretty good for a rifle hunt. Now, unfortunately, again, not the ideal trophy shot. Basically, anywhere that we try to put this buck in the trophy shot pose. The game says can't place the animal here because it is in water. And naturally, with the slope here, that wouldn't work too good. So just kind of making do with what we have. And again, not the most special whitetail, so I don't consider that too big a deal. And, you know, we kind of led us in the direction we're trying to go a little further south than I intended, but this is actually a pretty good area, so I think we'll just kind of adapt and continue eastward. Well, it looks like, unfortunately, our percentage of success on tracking a heavy white tail buck is going down a little bit. Another kind of average size one at 92, 115, although better than some of these small ones we saw earlier. And as he's walking across, we can go ahead and drop him there, so... It kind of led us a little bit east on the track. Yeah, it's actually got us close enough to fast travel and only use one camping supply, so not a big deal. It really wasn't, again, that long of a track. We've been rather fortunate, I would say, in that aspect. A lot of times, the deer just end up in spots where you don't see them, and they'll end up spooking and really prolonging the tracking process, but yeah, just another average-sized buck double lunged at 53 meters. And a 99.4 score, you don't see a lot with this particular frame that are sub 100. Now he's got two drop tines there, a sticker on his G2 there that are hurting him. But even still, that's kind of rare to see that happen. But yeah, I think that may be kind of our last area for this hunt. So hopefully it'll be a repeat of a previous hunt where we had a 190 in this area. And a buck running right away is definitely not a bad deal. Unfortunately, though, the buck being close is the only repeat from that last hunt. Again, we have kind of like an average size buck, and certainly I can't complain. I mean, we had a 168 and a 170 during the course of this hunt, so it would be a lot to expect, even another good one. But able to drop him again as well, there was that hunt that I mentioned at the beginning, back on Ruguru Bayou, in which we had a, I think it was a single lung shot, where the buck ran a fair distance actually after being hit, or maybe it was Logger's Point. I'm not sure which map we had that gun on, but I'm pretty sure every deer shot today, even this one that was a single lung hit, did drop on his tracks. So that's definitely a good sign. And yeah, we had a bunch of bucks today, like I said, a couple of good ones. Unfortunately, no 200 yet again. But I always like to do this, kind of like the Thanksgiving video, just a, a bit of a tradition that we've done for quite some time. And hopefully, 
had pretty good success with bucks today here in Classic. Hopefully it'll be a good sign for the real life side of Red Warning. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching. Good luck once again to anyone who is still out. And I'll see you next time.